invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. When Luigi Vasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, in your last letter, you ask I should write to you, how's the Miami Tick business? Well, in America, when a business is not so good, people say, is not so hot. <laughs> to tell the truth to Mamma Mia, my business is not only not so hot, I think it's a frozen to death. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to try so hard to be good American business man. Last month, I'm even going to join up with the better business bureau. But still, the business is no better. <laughs> Then I'm going to try to advertise like a store across the way. He's run a half a price sale. I'm going to run a half a price sale. He's run end of the month of sale. I'm going to run end of the month of sale. Then yesterday, he's run a fire sale and I'm stuck. <laughs> it's my bad luck. I'm a got to no fire. But the worst thing of all, I'm all my countryman of Pasquale, $160, four months rent. Most of the time, I'm a kind of talk with the Pasquale, and he's giving me time to pay. Even at this four months of rent, I'm owe him for the last eight months. <laughs> but this morning, I'm going to receive a letter from him, which is to say, if I'm a no pay, he's a kick me out. When the Pasquale is a threatening me, or a holler at me, or a telling me he's going to get a lawyer to collect the $160, it's no bother me. But when he's a spend money on a three-cent stamp, I know he's a mean business. <laughs> Mamma mia, if a Pasquale is to throw me out of my store, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Well, is it time now to go to my night school class? Maybe I'm going to get advice from my friends or my teacher, Miss Spalding. Quiet, class, class, attention. Now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwick? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? In the words of that Irishman, Winston Churchill, Lafayette, we are here. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, in the first place, Winston Churchill is English, not Irish. And it may interest you to know Lafayette was a Frenchman and that quotation was from General Pershing, an American. The please, Miss Spalding, what I started for a roll call, let's not build into an international situation. <laughs> Thank you, fellow Bobby. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I'm getting tired of your antics. Out of the hundred times I've called the roll, you've answered correctly about five times. Miss Spalding, you are calling me a five presenter? <laughs> me, a man without a deep freeze to his name? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I've had enough out of you. For those remarks, you may consider yourself in the doghouse. Now, class, today's lesson concerns an era in American history known as westward expansion. Mr. Horowitz, can you tell me one cause of this westward expansion? Yes. The desire of the people in the east to expand to the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Uh, Mr. Schultz, what can you add to that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what's well, the idea? You said I was in the doghouse. <laughs> Never mind. After all, what does a cocker spaniel know from American history? <laughs> I said, never mind. Now, class, around the middle of the 19th century, thousands of hardy pioneers faced the dangers of starvation, unmarked trails, and hostile Indians in order to brave a new life in the West. They did this at a terrible cost. Mr. Basco, can you tell us at what cost? $160. <laughs> what? Where did you get that figure? I'm an old kind of garret, but if I'm a hat at the Pasquale, he wouldn't have thrown me out. <laughs> You see, today I'm going to get a letter from a Pasquale. Oh, Mr. Basco, please try to forget your personal problems and concentrate on our history lesson. All right, Miss Pauling, I try. Good. Now, Mr. Basco, can you tell us the name of the man who said, Go West, young man? Go West, the young man? Yes. Come now. It was Horace. 
for us? It was a horse. I thought you said it was a man. <laughs> now, Luigi, I'm surprised at you. You should know the answer to a simple question like that. Well, Mr. Schultz, suppose you tell him who said, go west, young man. Certainly. But Horace Height. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I didn't think I'd get an answer like that in a thousand years. To tell you the truth, was a lucky guess. <laughs> Miss Balding. Yes, Mr. Olson. If I am a volunteer, I would like to give the correct answer. Go ahead, Mr. Olson. The one who said, go west, young man. But... Oh, I would gladly go without food for three weeks if he would only make one mistake. <laughs> the man's name was Horace Greeley. Correct. Pass the salami. I'm putting on weight again. <laughs> The period of Western expansion was one of the most glorious in American history. There was a period of opportunity. Immigrants, many of them just like us, went looking for a new land. By covered wagon, by ox cart, by horse, by foot. Searching for a new life and a wonderful chance to start all over again. Start all over again? Mr. Olson, I'm proud of you. I appreciate what you say, Miss Spaulding. I always study hard. In, in fact, last night I spent six hours with my nose in a book. Olson, tomorrow, why don't you send your nose to school and you stay home? <laughs> Olsen, I think it was wonderful what you just said. I think I'm going to go out the West. Mr. Basco, you're not serious. Yes, I'm a very serious, Miss Spalding. But Squally is going to throw me out of the store, and I'm going to go someplace. Luigi, that's a very big step, to leave everything and everybody and go settle in a strange place. Well, I, I know, Horowitz, but that's what I did when I'm going to leave Italy a year and a half ago. Mm. I'm going to take a chance then, and I'm going to take a chance now. Ach, Luigi, out West, I can't imagine you on a horse. What are you trying to be? Hop along, Basco? <laughs> Luigi, why don't you go talk to Pasquale? You had trouble with him before. That's right, Mr. Basco, and you've always been able to work things out. Well, you, you, you really think I should have tried talking to Pasquale? Oh, sure, Luigi, and cheer up, smile. You shouldn't try to run away from troubles. Like me, they in the delegatessen business. He who fights and runs away, we hold his coat till he decides to pay. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. <laughs> huh? Pasquale, ain't you angry at me? Me? Angry? Oh, I'm no angry with you, little pumpkin head. <laughs> but the, that letter you sent to me about the rental money. Oh, that. Look, little cabbage puss. <laughs> Just because you owe me four months of rent, and besides this, you don't want to marry my daughter, so I decide to kick you out in the street. That don't mean I'm angry with you. No? Then what does it mean? It mean I'm a hate of you, that's all. <laughs> if you don't pay me that $160, it's a goodbye, Luigi. Don't care where you go. Well, Pasquale, listen. I'm going to got a $50 in the bank that I was saving for rainy day. Too late. You was wiped out by a flood. <laughs> Go, 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 Luigi. Pack your little suitcase and go sleep in the park with the birdies. Go, go, go. All right, Pasquale. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm, I'm just want to thank you, Pasquale, for bringing me to this wonderful country. And for helping me all the time and for, for, for everything. Well, goodbye, Pasquale. Wait. Huh? Luigi, if I was to forget about the $160, you would have been very happy, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, sir, Pasquale. You would have been so happy, you would have fainted, eh? I think so, Pasquale. Well, Luigi, I'm going to let you off with that rent money. What? Pasquale, you going to do this for me? Sure. Now, I'm going to do you a favor, you do me. <laughs> well, sure, Pasquale, what the, what the favor you want I should do? While you fainted, I wanted you should have married my daughter, Rose. <laughs> Pasquale, you just gave me smelling the sauce. <laughs> Answer is a no. Now, wait, Luigi, don't talk so fast. No man has ever had the opportunity like I'm offering you. Your own house, a car, rugs, a sterling of silver, refrigerator, toaster, television, etc. It's like a radio program. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to marry Rosa to get all of that. That's right. No, Pasquale, keep your jackpot. <laughs> all right, I'm going to keep her. I don't know why I'm ever spending one penny on you. I could have rented this store out a hundred times and make a bigger money with it. Pasquale, I'm sorry. Sorry is no putting money in my pocket. Pasquale, I was thinking there was more important things to you than money. 
like a love and a friendship. In the older country, we enjoy lots of things, and we didn't need money. Ah, you've been reading too much about the Marshall Plan. <laughs> Louis J. Farber, as I'm concerned, money is everything. Money is a ticket and a blood. With the money, you're something. Without the money, you're just a boob and McNuffin. Well, uh, maybe, maybe you're right, Pasquale. Maybe money is everything. Well, I'm leaving the city. I'm going to fire away and make a lot of money. Then maybe you have a respect for me. Oh, big shots, eh? Where are you going? I'm living in Chicago, Pasquale. I'm going to West. Going to West? Luigi, what are you going to do in New York? <laughs> Pasquale, out the West is a California. Oh, a California, Luigi. Not that it's making any difference to me. But I think you're making a bigger mistake of going to California. That's Indian country, you know. <laughs> I'm not afraid of Pasquale. Not afraid. A big hero. When those Indians are scout for you, you're going to look pretty stupid walking around Hollywood without your head on. I'm taking my chance, Pasquale. Uh, another thing. Uh, before you get to California, you've got to cross those big mountains. The Alps. <laughs> Plenty cold up there. I'm a reader once how a general Acosta, he's to get attacked by the Indians, they let him freeze it to death. That's the way we get the name, though. Frozen Acosta. <laughs> Pasquale, you can't frighten me. I'm still going to California. Miss Spaulding has told us in the school about the great Western expansion and how people have got a chance to make a new life for themselves in the West. So if you excuse me now, I'm going to pack my things. All right, all right. I see you got your mind made up, but nothing's going to stop you, eh? Pasquale would have to be something very big to stop me. All right, then I'm going to call her out. <laughs> Rosa! 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 Yes, yeah, she come here, my little darling. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. <laughs> hello, Rosa, and a goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Papa, where's Luigi going? He's going to a place where the Indians are they going to scalp him. He's going to freeze it to death in the mountains and die of thirst in the desert. And the vultures are they going to pick his bones? We'll have a good time, Luigi. <laughs> of Luigi Vasco's adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, this is one of the biggest days in your Luigi's life. Today, I'm going to leave Chicago where I was a big failure in a business and I'm going to California. There, I'm going to be much bigger. Who knows it? Maybe I'm going to discover a lot of oil. What a fortune I'm going to make. I'm going to put all the oil in a little bottles and I'll sell it to the people who's got a sauna machine. <laughs> also, in the West, they got a lot of gold. Maybe I find that. Maybe I discover gold faster because it's easier to find. And every little piece is stamped to 14 carats. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm going to get my suitcase packed and I'm leaving now to buy a train ticket. Where I'm going to write to you from next, I'm going to know. Luigi, my fellow poobies. Ach, Luigi, you are really leaving us? Schultz, believe me, Schultz, in side is a voice that's to say, Luigi, don't go. But when a Pasquale is to say, money is a thicker than a blood, that's to give me a push. <laughs> you mean Pasquale absolutely wouldn't listen about the rent money? That's right. Who that cheap cop? <laughs> Pasquale is so stingy, when he squeezes an Indian penny, Zitting Bull don't sit down for three weeks. <laughs> Oh, please. No, no, how could a man with such a soft brain have such a hard heart? <laughs> Luigi, my best friend, tell me you ain't going. Schultz, please don't stop me. I'm going out the west, even though I'm going to go through the Alps, the Indians, they're going to take my scalp off, and the vultures, they're going to pick up my bones. Luigi, did Pasquale tell you that? Yes. Who has he got you for shimmered? <laughs> uh, Luigi, put down that suitcase, you're staying right here. Well, thanks, Schultz, you're real friend. But I'm already make up my mind. Oh, you thought it over. You are going, huh? Yes. Now I'm going to go to the station and buy a ticket for the 8 o'clock train. The 8 o'clock train? Goodbye, Schultz. Well, 
Luigi, you go on the way. You say goodbye. I don't want you to go. I'm not saying goodbye. <laughs> he went. Luigi, you came back. No, no, sure, sir. This underwear was sticking out of my suitcase. <laughs> Got it caught in the door. Goodbye. Oh, I'm going to miss that little Wiener schnitzel. <laughs> His underwear got caught in the door. No, you got to love a fellow like that. One man leaves Chicago and the city is empty. Hey, Louis, Jack. Uh, hey, Mr. Delicatessen, man. What are you doing here in the dark? I'm planting mushrooms. What does it look like? <laughs> well, you Simon Legree, now that you threw Luigi out from Chicago, you feel better? Ah, Luigi doesn't now leave in Chicago. He's just to make a bigger talk. Hey, Luigi. You're talking to the walls. Luigi is taking the 8 o'clock train to California. If you don't believe he really went, look around. Suitcase ain't here. Bureau drawers empty. His sneakers gone. That's all right. Place is all cleaned up. Hey, my picture was on the wall. He's a god. What the fuck is you taking my picture with it? To frighten the Indians? What do you think? <laughs> you don't know, huh? You got a hole in your head. Your brain leaked out. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> so that little schlump cop, he always looks up to you like a father. Like a father. <laughs> what a horrible thought. <laughs> like a father? Yeah. A little banana nose. <laughs> Well, there's enough place for sentiments in a business. A fella can't pay his rent, out he goes. You're going to call him a mean, a cold, a vicious, a bloodthirsty. I've got a constitutional right to be. I'm a landlord. <laughs> in this country, money's a money. Pay or get out. The cash on a barrel ahead. And that's what you got, the barrel ahead. <laughs> I know what I say is a right. A man who can't take care of himself, he shouldn't expect anybody else to. Even a friend's. I wonder where he is now. Probably walking around in the street to saying to somebody, Excuse me, mister, which way to the railroad station? Excuse me, mister, which way is the railroad station? Go two blocks up, turn to the right, then two to the left, ask somebody for the South Station. You can't miss it. Huh? Well, thank you, mister. Well, so goodbye, Chicago. Maybe your city is a too big for me. But I'm going out to West. Hey, look out! Watch where you're going! Out to West, yeah. I'm going to look for gold, for oil. I'm going to little city. Maybe I'm going to start to my own city. Yeah, my own city. And now, fellow citizens, it is indeed a pleasure and a privilege to introduce to you the most illustrious citizen of our glorious town, that great billionaire Luigi Basco, the founder of Basco Bird. Well, I thank you, fellow citizens. I remember when I'm a first to come here from Chicago. Way back in 1949. Mr. Basco, sir, if you please. Yes, sir. The Basco Bugle report, sir, they've just discovered 500 more oil wells on your property. Uh -huh. The stuff is gushing all over the place. What shall we do? Give the oil to the people that'll make the French a fried of potatoes with it. <laughs> Mr. Basco. Yes, sir. Sir, they've just announced a mountain of gold was discovered on your property. Where do you hear this? On station BAFCO. Sir, what shall we do with all that gold? If everybody in the country want a piece, they get a free filling. <laughs> Mr. Basco, there's somebody who wants to see you very urgently. All right, so where is he? Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Huh? Who are you? Don't you remember me? Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace. Well, yes, so you look familiar from about uh, 50 years ago. I'm a guy, there's somebody here you're going to recognize very well. Rosa! 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 You call me Papa! <laughs> yes, Sir Rosa. Say hello to Luigi. I'm too tired, Papa. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm recognizing you now. Pasquale, I'm going to know how the feelings are for you. You was like a Papa to me. You can now retire and live here with me, and here's the $160 I'm going to owe you. $160? Uh huh. <laughs> You mean a hundred and sixty trillion dollars. But Quelly, why so much? The interest is a mount up. Mamma mia. Now hand over your house, your city, your oil, your gold, your everything. All right, all right. Break up, don't hold up the line. 
Oh, oh. Like, excuse me, I was asleep. Uh, please, uh, I'm a like to go to California on 8 o'clock at train. All right, would you like an upper or a lower? Please, I'm a got to my own teeth. <laughs> no, no, I meant Bert. <laughs> oh, Bert. Yeah. I was born on September 21st. <laughs> no, no. Uh, what ticket do you want? Well, I'm a got a $50. Okay, here's a ticket on a coach. Fort Limited, leaving track four in 15 minutes. Thank you. Oh, you better hurry up, mister, if you don't want to miss your train. Well, all right, sir. And don't forget your suitcase. Oh, yes, sir, thank you. Oh, Mamma mia, I'm really gone. Where am I going? Well, what am I going to do? Who am I now? I thought a Pasquale would have surely come and stop me, but... But uh, no, he's not come. Luigi, Schultz. Luigi, we've been waiting here for you. We have asked you. Well, I, I was walking around, Schultz. Yeah, we came to say goodbye to you. We? You came over to somebody else, sir? Luigi, it's me. Look. Oh, Horowitz. Anybody else, sir? I am here. Olsen. Anybody else, sir? Nobody else. Who else do you want? Nobody. All the world! You better get on it, all Luigi. Goodbye. 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 Mamma mia, one minute on the train and it's already feeling like one a year. Well, maybe I'm going to try to go to sleep. I want to think so much. My head is ache. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm, I'm thirsty. Oh, here's a sign. If you want the porter, ring the bell. I ring for the porter. Maybe he's a helping me. Is it you all is the ring for me, sir? Pasquale. Luigi. Pasquale. What are you doing on a train? You think I'm going to leave you go, little pumpkin ahead? <laughs> Who am I going to have at the holler ride? That's right, the Pasquale. Go ahead, the holler. What's the idea you leaving your store, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, for the Pasquale, you said money was a ticket and a blood. Ah, I said that, but there's something even a ticket. That's in my head. <laughs> Next stop, are you getting off over to me? Pasquale. You want me to come back? Sure, I want you to come back. Then, then you're not angry with sure, me? Sure, I'm angry with you. You told Schultz I was like your papa. Yeah, that's right. Well, but... before we become friends again, I'm taking you home to the woodshed. I'm going to give you a good spanking for running away from home. What do you think of that, the bus, All right, the papa, all right. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, I'm back into my store again. And it's a feel good to be home. You should see how nice Pasquale is a treat to me now. Just like a little baby. Already today, he's making me drink three bottles of milk. <laughs> and when I went to sleep last night, he's tucking me in. And when I'm a tell him I'm a go for a walk, he's a say, Luigi, be careful. Don't take a candy from a stranger. <laughs> oh, wait, here he comes now. Luigi? Here's another bottle of milk. Thank you, your papa. Luigi, don't call me papa. Call me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Mamma Mia, I used to have a landlord. Now, I'm a got a daddy. You're loving a son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Be sure to listen next week at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama, Basco, describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conry as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, and Jody Gilbert as Rosa. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. Bob Stevenson speaking. You've got a date with a beautiful blonde Monday night. She's my friend Irma, the comedy starring Marie Wilson, returning to CBS for a sparkling new season of laughter. My friend Irma is one of the exciting lineup of Monday night shows you'll hear over CBS this fall. Marie Wilson, as the comic misadventurist, will delight you with her brain in reverse, with hilarious consequences for all concerned. Remember, my friend Irma returns tomorrow night, the same night that Lux Radio Theater comes back to CBS.
Lux Radio Theater will bring you Betty Davis and James Stewart co-starring in the delightful screen comedy, June Bride. You'll find Lux Radio Theater right in the same familiar Monday night hour you've heard it these many years. So join us on most of the same CBS stations tomorrow night for Betty Davis and James Stewart in June Bride when Lux presents Hollywood on CBS. Remember, My Friend Irma returns tomorrow night, the same night that Lux Radio Theater comes back to Columbia over most of these same stations. And now, stay tuned for Corliss Archer, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is CBS, and this fall you'll hear them all on the Columbia Broadcasting System.